You're watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for joining me in another edition of Inside Automotive right here in the CBT Automotive Network. In today's fast-paced market, auto dealers are pulled in many different directions, as all of you know, and compliance often slips down the priority list. However, in light of the recent cyber attack at CDK Global, it's crucial for dealers and their teams to stay aware of the compliance component as well. So joining me now is Shannon Robertson, who is the Executive Director of AFIP, the Association of Finance and Insurance Professionals. Shannon, you must be a very busy man these days with all that's going on. So uh, talk to us. What, uh, what, do you, what do you say about all of these, uh, you know, all of this that's happening with CDK Global? I mean, there's dealers out there right now that are very nervous, right? Well, and should be nervous. I mean, I think what we're learning in today's environment is that, you know, anybody can be attacked from a cyber standpoint. I yeah. mean, nobody can be fully protected, but there are some things that we can be doing to make sure we're protected the best we can be. Mm -hmm. Um, and and there's these compliance requirements are not new, right? right? The safeguard rule changes have been out of several years. There are things that dealers were are required to be doing mm -hmm. um, and required to keep those updated. And I think a lot of dealers in the last month or so have aggressively gone back to review their safeguard program. Yeah, right. Yeah, for you sure. Know, is it up to date? Are people doing the training? That's right. right? And That's we're cool. getting a lot of those phone calls of, do you have the training? Do you have the vendor agreements? You know, how can you help us be protected? That's right. I think I mentioned to you before we got recording here today that um, whenever we did a show on compliance prior to the CDK global outage, um, it was kind of our lowest rating shows. Sorry, I know you're in that industry, but I know- Oh, it's that, true, right? I understand. Right, it was just like, wow, nobody's really watching the compliance stuff. All of a sudden, we've gotten a tremendous amount of inquiries and people that said, do more on compliance because you know, this is obviously a very hot issue among dealers, especially the larger the group, the bigger they're out there, right? For, you know, for right. uh, to, to be hit by a cyber attack and to pay a tremendous ransom to get back online. So I think the timing is, is good that we've got you on. What are some of the common compliance challenges that F&I professionals face today? That's a great question. Um, I, th I think the big issue that I find with compliance is that battle between profit and compliance, mm -hmm. right? You know, dealers are trying to be profitable in what they do, and yet there's a long list of things they need to do to be compliant in that process. Yeah. And a lot of the conversations we're having with dealers is today is compliance is not an obstacle. It's part of your daily life, right? Yeah. We need to embrace it. We need to understand it, and we need to learn how to implement it. And if done correctly, it can help you be profitable, but it's understanding how it fits into that daily life. Right. Um, right. In the F&I office. Sure, sure. And are dealers, do you find that they're obviously much more receptive um, to, to this kind of training and this kind of an, uh, attention paid to compliance? No, that's a good question. I think that, you know, and I don't want to say all dealers, but we have seen an increase in requests for AFIP certification, mm -hmm. right? And an increase in the cybersecurity training um, since the uh, cyber attack. I mean, that's what brings things to the compliance attention. When dealers get fined by the FTC, when we see cyber attacks, that's when everybody starts picking up the phone right. and, and essentially calling us back, right? I've been leaving voicemails. Now I, now I get those callbacks of, <laughs> Um, yeah. I saw that this dealer was fined. I saw this dealer was attacked. Um, yeah. You know, what scary. can we do to help? That's it right. is scary. That's right. How does a dealer assess the biggest compliance risk at their store? Well, first of all, they got to do audits, mm -hmm. right? How can a dealer know what their risk is if they're not auditing? Right. Um, so what a compliance officer needs to be doing is doing a full dealer audit to determine what their area of risk is. Mm -hmm. And it's going to change per dealership. Sometimes we find it in the service area, right? Sometimes we find it in the F&I office. It's just going to depend on what we find in that audit. Uh, but it's, it's making sure they do the audit. They know where the areas of risk are and they're protected, yeah. right? Yeah, is that usually somebody it's it, from outside the group rather than inside the group that does that type of an audit? Uh, there are companies that do outside audits, but you need to be in, doing internal audits as well. Okay. Um, okay. If you look at the federal sentencing guidelines, it clearly states that a dealer is liable 
Mm -hmm. right? Even if they do everything they're supposed to do, they're still liable if they get attacked or an employee violates the rules. However, if a dealer can show that they had the proper, you know, measures in place, they had training for their employees, they can mitigate that fine by almost up to 95% by just doing the internal work themselves. Wow, wow, that's, that's fantastic. So what protective measures can dealers take to protect themselves from compliance related issues? You just mentioned one right there, but are there others? Uh, training's the big one. I mean, okay. I, at the end of the day, it's all about training in my, in my opinion. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, I mean, training for me is accountability. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna be compliant, we have to hold our employees accountable because it cannot be successfully implemented if not everybody buys into the process. Yeah. And the only way to get the employees to buy in and protect the dealers is to have that training so they understand it and they understand their accountability and their role. I think as employees understand how much they can protect their dealer by doing the right things, by making sure they do the OFAC check, by making sure they do the identity check, right? Once they understand their role in the impact, they become accountable and they tend to follow those processes. Sure, sure. I spoke to a dealer the other day, he's got 2,400 employees. He said, Jim, I've got basically 2,400 gateways into my system that, you know, most dealers are out there with anywhere from 100 employees all the way up to, you know, thousands if you're a publicly traded company with 100 plus dealerships. But, um, and, and it's true, right? Every one of those employees are a gateway to get into that system. 100%, I mean, yeah. I mean that, that the cybersecurity, knowing that anybody can click on an email and expose your dealer, I think is scary and probably keeps a lot of dealers awake at night. That's Cause right. even after all the training, even after everything yeah. they've done, at the end of the day, somebody can click on an email, open it up. Um, I'm sure as you you have, you know, we have the, we have cybersecurity training for my employees. Yeah. Right. They have to go through the emails. The IT company sends them fake spam emails. Right. Yeah. I clicked on one. I'll be candid with you. I clicked on one the other day about two in the morning. I checked my email and saw a your Netflix account had been renewed. I was like, I don't remember this. I right. opened it and it was my IT company telling me I clicked on an email I wasn't supposed to, right? Wow. So even even the best of us, it, if we're not in that mindset, yep. can make that mistake after all the training we've been through. Not amazing. That's what you get for being up at two o'clock in the morning reading your email. <laughs> there, there you go, there you go. <laughs> This is an issue that is here to stay though. It's only, we're only gonna hear about more of these situations, not less. It's not something that we're putting, you know, water on the fire here and it's, and it's gonna be done. And I think the CDK global situation brought that to the forefront, that especially with these huge uh, ransoms being paid, there's gonna be more of this, not less of this, right? There will be. The other thing is the FTC requires dealers to self-report Mm. If they've had a breach of unencrypted information for over 500 of their, you know, customer base, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So if you think about that, you can also now go and look through the FTC and see dealers that have been breached. They have to self-report. Oh, wow. So that's, that puts it even more in the spotlight for us to be able to access and see how frequently this is happening. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to go away, right? Once, once those, you know, those organizations overseas learn that, that we're susceptible, they're gonna continue to attack our industry until they until it just does not work anymore. Um, I mean, the FBI, you know, talking to some insiders, the FBI said they were warning auto, uh, you know, auto dealers early this year, you know, be ready, right? We think your industry is gonna, gonna be attacked. Oh, wow, and, there, and, and it was, that's, yeah. that's something, but, uh, but whether it be the FBI or not, it, it's just you've got to run a really good defense. I mean, 100% of the time. And uh, you've got to be right 100% of the time. They only have to be right one one time, right? And, and they're in. It's, it's a very- That's the scary part. It, it really is, no question about it. Well, Shannon Robertson, Executive Director of AFIP, the Association of Finance and Insurance Professionals. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. I know that our dealer audience will get a lot out of your visit. So thanks so much. This is, these, are, these are the alarms that we need in the industry. And for dealers that are watching, don't wait until something happens and then call Shannon Robertson and his team. Get these guys in here quicker so, uh, so, so that things don't happen. But uh, thank you so much, Shannon, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thanks. Thanks for watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick.